Subway 400 on Fox is brought to you by Coca-Cola. Let's make it real. By Aaron's Sales and Lease Ownership. Let Aaron's drive your dreams home today. By UPS, the official express delivery company of NASCAR. We want to race the truck. People love the truck. And by the new Chevrolet. It's 10 new cars and trucks in 20 months on American Revolution. NASCAR in 2004 has a new title sponsor for its premier series, now known as the Nextel Cup, and much more. Here's Jeannie. We are working our way down the checklist of what's new for NASCAR in 2004. We have the new tire compounds. They've changed the spoiler. And, oh, yeah, the fuel is different. Bob Owen, Senior Vice President of Sunoco, welcome to the family. Exactly right. Thank you very much. We're excited to be here for Sunoco's entire history, and that includes ma manufacturing gasoline. Almost from the time people began driving cars, we've emphasized quality and we've emphasized performance. That emphasis on performance naturally led us into motorsports. We're the world's largest manufacturer of racing and gasoline and this opportunity to partner with NASCAR was just seemed like a perfect fit for us. Couldn't be more excited. All right, Bob, get to the pumps. Thank you very much. Okay. Sunoco is the world's, or the nation's rather, largest refiner of racing gasolines, and we welcome them to the NASCAR family. Dick Bergman? Well, Darrell was talking about the windshield tear-offs. This is what one looks like after it's been on a race car for, oh, about 150 laps or so. They just pull these things off. See the little tab that tells them which one goes first, which one goes second? They just toss it away, and the driver has a nice, clean view when it's gone. I can see clearly now the tear-offs gone. We listened in on Matt Kenson as we get ready for this restart. Hey, Matt. Go. Yeah, three-legged message here. Two car wants an OV, get five points, and we come back to green. Yeah, the see how plays out. I mean, it's quicker than I am. I need to keep up. I'll let him have it, but if he starts dropping back, I'm not going to slow myself up. All righty. I'll relay the message. What Rusty's wanting to do is lead a lap and get those five points for leading. I, I believe if I was mad, I would just kind of, uh, he said what I would say. If he can get up here and pass me, I'll let him, but I'm not going to pull over and let him. Because if he pulls over and let Rusty go by, he may let end up letting other cars go by. That car likes being out front right now. But I, I uh, admire him for asking. <laughs> Doesn't hurt to ask. Let's ask if we can crank it up for a lap or two. Rusty Wallace in the two has his hands full as we ride with Robbie Gordon in the 31 car. He has a lap down back in 19. Jeannie is with the defending champ of the Subway 400. Yeah, Del Terrence surrounded by media this time last year. You were in victory lane. Can you take us through what happened out there? Yeah, I, I, everything was fine, and then I came off a of turn two uh, in the gas, and it just quit running. So uh, something happened in the engine. Uh, so rare that we have anything happen in that department, but uh, some days are like that. Absolutely. I know that you're saying it's a little rare, but maybe for the viewers at home, seeing the Roush and Yates engine going in the Daytona 500, we're seeing a problem here. Any relation at all that you might think? Yeah, I can't imagine that's got anything to do with it. You'll have to talk to Doug and Robert Yates about the engine stuff, but uh, I can't imagine that had anything. Doug and his people are still going wide open there as they normally are, so uh, just one of those unfortunate things. We had a really good race car. That was the main thing. All right. Thanks for the time. And that, uh, that question of Matt Kenseth was not from Robbie Reiser, but from his spotter up on the roof. You know, attrition is not that high. When Dale Jarrett only joins three other cars. We only have four cars out of this race. Dale Jarrett, Jimmy Johnson, Kirk Shelmerdine, and Joe Rutman. But you can be a little philosophical about it when you were running good. And, uh, you know, he struggled so much at the latter part of last year, and he's been pretty competitive the first two races. So he's feeling pretty good about it, I think. Competitive. 
competitive describes Casey Kane. He is seventh in the race, but as you see here, he is the leader of the rookie class in this race. Steve Burns. With crew chief Tommy Baldwin. Tommy, how's your driver doing with that imaginary egg between his foot and the gas pedal, and how are you doing adjusting the race car for him? He's doing really good. I mean, we spot. We seem to be spotting the field a lot of positions. We're not doing a very good job on pit road yet today, but uh, I got faith in the guys. And, uh, you know, the Dodge UAW Dodge dealer's car is uh, it, it's running real good, really good on the long runs. We just got to get a couple long runs here. I think we got a shot at it. Do you carry the egg to Vegas? Oh, yeah. No, no, it's hammered down in Vegas. It's a totally different place here. And he's right. Uh, Vegas is one of those places where you've got to be in the gas all the time there if you're going to go fast. You know, a guy that has made a nice recovery at, what, about 100 laps ago, he was about to go a lap down. Now he's back up at night. Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the Budweiser car, the number eight car. So I believe some adjustments have been made to that car, and it's getting better. You know, and I think what happens, the sun's going in, coming out, the track temperature keeps changing. Sometimes it'll favor your car. Sometimes it will not. More than likely, if your car's off a little bit, you're going to like it cloudy. You're going to want that cloud cover and get some heat off the track. That accommodates the car a little bit better. Won't slide around near as much. As strong as he's been the last couple of seasons, wasn't it kind of strange to hear that this is the first time he has ever led the point standings? And, and of all places to be coming Rockingham, because they talked earlier in the day, he has never finished better than 13th here. Darrell even talked in the pre-race, his race here a year ago. He had to be dizzy when he left here. He spun out so many times. Yeah, he had, ter he had a terrible Rockingham last year. And, uh, looks like they have definitely improved, and that's good news for him. Jeff Gordon got the pardon on the last caution flag. So he restarted 18th. He's now past Jeremy Mayfield and is up one spot from there. Back on the lead lap. Remember how he got a lap down was he pitted for four tires shortly after that. The caution comes out. That was caution three. We've had a total of five today. I'm afraid of. I'm just real way too tight on this traffic. Well, Jeff Gordon is telling him he's just way too tight in the traffic as we see Rusty Wallace and the two continue to try to get around Robbie Gordon, who's a lap down in the 31, but he don't have any downforce on the nose. Jeff Gordon don't back there in traffic. He'd like to get up there in some clean air. It's going to take a few laps to get there, though. Yeah, but that's right. Rusty was just about to run out of patience with the 31 car. Rusty Wallace passes Robbie Gordon. Now he's one and a half seconds back of Matt Kenseth. We'll see if he can close that gap when we return to the Subway 400 on Fox.